Okay team, let's talk about binary search. So here we're gonna have a sorted array. This will not work if we don't have a sorted array. We have a sorted array and when we wanna look through some for something, uh, say I wanna find the number 40 in my sorted array, what I would do is I would say, well, let me pick the thing in the middle and let me see if it's 40. Um, so I look at the 37 and because 40 is bigger than that, I know it's not gonna be in that other side of the array. And so I'm able to cut my input size in half. And remember when we're able to cut our input size in half, in half, in half, in half, in half, that'll talk, take log base two of n steps. So here I know that it's bigger than 37, so I'm able to look in the right hand side of it. Um, and I say, okay, it must be in this subset. Let me pick the middle value there. And then I will, uh, it's 42, I'm looking for 40. And so I know it must be in the left hand side. So I can discard everything in the right hand side. So do you see how I'm able to cut my input size in half every time? So it's a little tricky here because once I know that it's not 42, I don't have to check that element anymore. And so I'm, I'm making it in half minus one. Uh, but in general, when we talk about binary search, we'll talk about it as if we're breaking it in half exactly. Um, and that works out fine in terms of um, our analysis of the algorithm. The big picture is we're able to take a input, uh, our problem's input size, check the middle value and then divide it in half on what we can check. So we know we don't have to check in the other side. Let's look through how we might do this with sort of keeping track of what's my hypothesized range of values. Um, so I will use um, the duck as the, the, my hypothesis of where it might be. And I will use this pink duck as my end point. So I think it's somewhere between here and this index exclusive. Okay, um, and I will pick the middle element. And I'll use this other brown duck for that. Um, so that's my middle element. And once I found that the element should be not between the blue duck and the pink duck, but between the brown duck and the uh, pink duck, I can update my blue duck to be one past where that brown duck was, right? So I can kind of narrow down. Now I'm searching between the blue and the pink in this subsection. Similarly, I can find the middle value. I find it smaller than the middle value. And so I can make the, the pink duck be at that same spot because I now want to look between the pink duck and the, sorry, the, the blue duck and the pink duck. Um, and it's exclusive of the pink and inclusive of the blue duck. Okay, um, let's do one more example. And in this example, I will look for 34. So I start off and I'm looking between the blue duck and the pink duck. Remember, inclusive of the blue duck, exclusive of the pink duck. And then I find the center element and I say, well, I'm looking for, what number did I say I was looking for, 34? I'm looking for 34, so it must be in this right hand side. And so now I'll set the pink duck to exactly where that uh, pivot or that, uh, I'm sorry, middle element was. So now I'm looking between the blue duck and the pink duck. Blue duck inclusive, pink duck exclusive. I identify the center element. Um, that center element is 33, but I want something, I'm looking for 34. And so I put the blue duck one past where that spot was, because now I want to look through the blue duck to the pink duck, inclusive of the blue duck, exclusive of the uh, pink duck. So you can imagine that um, the operation that I'm doing, you could imagine it being recursive, um, where I'm passing along like, okay, what's my range? What's my blue duck? What's my pink duck? Or I could just have a loop where I'm continually updating, where's my blue duck? Where's my pink duck? So hopefully that's helpful as you're thinking about how to design this algorithm. And the really powerful piece here is that um, we're working with a sorted array, and so we don't have to look at every element. If it was not a sorted array, then I would, to see if a value was in there, I might have to go through all of the elements um, because it, I wouldn't find it, and I would, would need to look at every single one before I decided for sure, okay, it's definitely not here. Whereas in this binary search example, I can look at log base two of n elements uh, before I decide, yep, 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 it's not in there. And I might find it right at the beginning. Like I might just be looking for 37 and I find it quicker than that. But with our big O analysis, we're always trying to think about our worst case scenario. 
Okay, so um, we get log base two of n because every time we're able to divide the problem in half, in half, in half, in half, and that's a really powerful thing. One thing I'll note is that it's important that we're working with arrays because we can access an element in an array in O of n time. Imagine we were trying to use a linked list, like our simple linked list, trying to do our linked list to implement a binary search. Well, it wouldn't work because to find the middle element, I would have to walk through each of the elements while, you know, while current.next is not null, current gets current.next. Can you imagine? Like, I'd have to loop through to get to the middle element. And so it would essentially defeat the purpose of how powerful binary search uh, is. So binary search works really well with arrays because we can access an element in constant time, but it wouldn't work well for something like a linked list.